now we're gonna have a performance and hands-on fun activity with Dr. Benjamin Fairfield. As many of you know already, Ben uh, works for the East West Center Education Program. So it's very exciting to have him to lead us tonight. Um, he was also a graduate fellow, a degree fellow back in 2010 through 12. And as he get, uh, said that, start setting up, I'm going to introduce a little bit more about him for those who may not know yet. Um, so Dr. Ben Fairfield received his PhD and MA in Ethnomusicology from the University of Hawaii at Manoa here and um, served as a Peace Corps volunteer in Chiang Mai, Thailand from 2007 and 2009. His ongoing research focuses on ethnic identity in Northern Thailand as mediated by music with a particular emphasis on current music, uh, participatory genres, and eco musicology. Uh, he currently serves as a faculty at the University of Hawaii Music Department, uh, where he founded the Thai Ensemble and he creates his. Uh, own uh, instruments from discarded and recycled objects. So you may see some of the interesting instruments here. So tonight we get to see him perform some of those uh, instruments and also we have opportunity to engage and participate to have fun playing with, playing with uh, those instruments um, led by Ben. So without I further ado, I'm going to give stage to Ben and he's going to lead us through for a fun activity for the next 30 minutes. Thank you. Let's see if this microphone is on too because I walk and talk. Okay. All right, that's, that's about all of it. Yeah, I was a graduate degree fellow in 2010 to 12, pursuing my MA in musicology, Peace Corps volunteer before that in Chiang Mai along the northwest border with Myanmar. So while we were geopolitically in Thailand, our village was very much Karen. Karen are an indigenous population, mostly in Burma, but about 600,000 or so in Thailand. So different, my experience of Thailand was different than some other experiences of Thailand. Um, and yeah, got my PhD in 2017, and started the Thai Ensemble in 2019. So we're gonna do sort of three sections today. There's gonna be 10 minutes of, uh, me showing you some music, 10 minutes of me talking about the instruments, 10 minutes of us all doing something together because what's the fun of music if it's not participatory? That's sort of my mantra from studying music in this region. Thailand, there's a few words for fun. Sanuk is the main one, but in Northern Thai it's Muan Thet So everybody, let's do a crowdsourced chant to get people breathing and talking together. Say Muan Thet Thet! Muan Thet Thet! Okay, so we're going to do some Northern Thai dialect in the first song, and I'm going to go next to the next slide. Okay, this is Music 311. It is kind of, it is, um, as you can see from the flyer, it's Monday night. It's open to anybody. It's one credit. You are all welcome to join. It's no musical experience required. It's very hands-on. We make all of our own instruments. We make all of our own instruments from recycled materials that we find on campus or from your own personal use. We made some this weekend in a workshop that will be featured later. Um, and yeah, as the visual kind of shows, that's what we're all about. We're making stuff. There's a whole series of Music 311 courses. If you're ever interested in taking courses at the music department, they're open to everybody. You can do gamelan music from Java. You can do hula. You can do Okinawan ensemble. There's koto. There's gagaku. There's all kinds of Asia-Pacific musical traditions you can explore in the music department. Mine is called the Thai Ensemble, but it's music from mostly Northern Thailand. So let's do a quick uh, run through of some songs. Okay. So this instrument you can make in your office if you're bored as a GA sitting around one day. This is cardboard and tape and, um, what are those called? Paper clips and coffee stirrers and chopsticks and fishing line. song in Northern Thailand. Thank 
trời mùa tiếng đen của em đây hào hát can hào hân chạy hào hút chạy này mùa hào Ok, so that's our Northern Thai song for the evening Next up, because it is a very diverse region with not just Thai language and Thai people If you attended uh, Carice's play, um, you might know this instrument already this is uh, an instrument inspired by the Karen or Bogonyal uh, people, um, known as the Denaku. And the Karen are very industrious and known for their knowledge of uh, everything in their in their world around them, from roots to the tops of trees, um, and also repurposing things that come into their community. So, in, while you typically find this instrument made out of deer skin and rattan vines, nowadays it's more made by um, galvanized metal and untwisted light brake cables. So you have a song like this. <laughs> years ago um, to the Golden Triangle area um, in the 1970s uh, as many places around the world including Hawaii were having sort of these cultural renaissances the Aka people had their own renaissance inspired by the music of Bob Dylan so this guy Audrey Tupo um, listened to a lot of American uh, music that was available to him in northern Thailand and he uh, sure this was on too. So he wrote this song about the Aka people who come and gather and celebrate their Aka-ness. And if you know American folk music, you might recognize this tune as uh, Shady Grove.
You're fine, you're fine. Sorry. I'll, I'll you know, put it back together later. Okay. So that is a quick uh, run through of some of the songs and the music that we do in the class. Ten minutes is perfect because we're moving on to the next slide. Um, this project has kind of expanded a little bit from the music of Thailand to a more general um, eco-musicology project um, that we're calling Kanika Opala. Oh, it's also website.com if you want to check it out. We're curating some of this stuff. Um, but if you know your local or Hawaiian phraseology, Kanika Pila means to get together in the backyard and jam on stringed instruments. Pila being instruments, Kani being the sound. So Kanika Opala, Opala means rubbish, trash. So Kanika Opala is our playing the trash um, locally. Um, so what's the goal of this class, here, I'll just pick this up, and sort of this larger project, is to get students and all of us really to think about these materials that come into our everyday lives and existences and our habits and give them a second look, a second chance, and not just immediately devalue and discard them. Okay, so this could apply to things as well as people. Um, being about a plot like a wrapper, a wrapper is like the thing you don't need and because you want the thing inside it, like the actual prize, right? So these, these objects are the things we don't need that we instantly write off as worthless. Um, but if you take some time and think about them, you can at least meditate on them and have them have some momentary additional value that you might not be granted to them when you just throw them in the garbage. Okay, so this can. Anybody know where this comes from? Think back, raw materials, where, what's the thing itself? Where does it come from? This participatory part. Where is this? What is this? Tin can? Aluminum? Where does aluminum come from? Where do we get it? From the sky? From the ground! Most of the aluminum that we interact with daily comes from West Africa. It's ripped out of the ground through a process called strip mining. You stick sticks of dynamite in the mountainside, you blow it up. It sends these plumes of, of dust into the sky so you can strip away the mountainside and get to the bauxite inside that you're going to turn into tin. But in that process of, of blowing up a mountainside sends dust into the air. That dust settles onto the leaves. Plants become less able to you know, do photosynthesis because they're covered in dirt. The, dirt also, the dust also settles in your lungs as you're breathing it in. It also settles in the aquifers, in the wells, ruining your water because you're trying to get this cheap material out of the ground. And once you do, you compress it, you blast it within a furnace, you wash it with caustic soda to strip away the impurities. You have a flat sheet of metal now that you ship across the ocean, the Atlantic. It goes across the Atlantic Ocean, it goes out to North America, maybe the Midwest, Ohio, to where it's turned into a can. They fill it up with beans, they put a cap on it, they put it on a truck, that truck drives to San Pedro Harbor in, in Southern California, it goes up to Seattle, in Washington, it's put on a massive container, it's shipped across the sea, it arrives in Honolulu Harbor where a giant crane comes and picks it up from Matson and puts it into a truck. That truck goes to Don Quixote. You go to Don Quixote and you pay $1.50 for this thing, this worthless package. You open it up, you take out the beans, you throw this Can you recycle it? Not here. So what happens? You throw it in the trash, you throw it away. Asterisk, where is away? Where on earth is away? There is no away. There is no away to which things can be thrown. There is no away to which people can be discarded, left, abandoned. Because when you throw it in the trash, it goes down the trash chute, it goes into the dumpster, it goes onto a truck, it gets trucked out to Waianae. It goes to H Power. They've got a giant container where they incinerate it. Is it gone? Is it away? No, because it becomes air, it becomes smoke, it becomes compounds that the H Power system is supposed to trap and keep from getting into the environment. But of course, there's always leakage, there's always seepage. The water goes down, it goes into the groundwater, it goes out to Electric Beach. There's little fish swimming around in Electric Beach. You catch them, you eat the fish, you're actually eating metals that are embedded within the flesh of the fish. This tin can never goes away, unfortunately. But this class is, is, is designed to get us to think about these things, right? What if instead of 
casting off is worthless, we at least divert it for a while and have fun with it and think about these things and let them enrich our lives instead of calling them worthless and being done with it. Okay, so we've got Earth. All our, our metal instruments represent the Earth. Here's some more metal. These are nails and a piece of wood. Have you ever pounded a nail in and you listen to the pitch go higher and higher? You can tune them. Plastics and everything else in the world. So plastics, um, dinosaurs. 
We've got sea, we've got land, we've got dinosaurs. <laughs> and finally, we have this material. This is the confluence of all things that we just mentioned because this comes from a tree. And in order to grow a tree, you need land, you need water, you need you need dinosaurs or any animal that is breathing out carbon dioxide because trees require carbon dioxide breathing in and they give us oxygen. So talk about reciprocity, right? This, this relationship that was established there. All those things come together to allow us to have wood. Um, so here's our guitar. This will come back later. Oh, So this is where this idea of kind of comes back in. If you went to the Kuhume, uh Conference last week, there was Kumu Kekuhi Keali Kanakaole Halilani who gave this wonderful talk. Um, and, and her family's mantra, or her family's oli, is this very well known one that goes, Iola oi, Iola ma kone, which means when you thrive, we thrive. Or your life is dependent on mine, my life is dependent on yours. And sort of the, the, the tree gives us that, that sort of sense of kinship and reciprocity. It requires our carbon dioxide, we need its oxygen. None of us are alone or doing things on our own. The fact that we're standing here breathing is a testament to our interdependability, interdependence. And reciprocity, because that's, that's sort of the goal of this kind of couple of projects. Okay, and since we're at the end of the, uh, the third, we're at the third section here now, which is where we're gonna do a crowdsourced, everybody, all hands on deck, performance together. And I also need 10 to 11 volunteers who want to play a percussion instrument for this song that we're all going to do together. So if you have a sense of beat and you want to play, or you just want to make your friend come up and play with you, I need 10 people. Okay, so shakers are going to be the very top line. And it's easy to remember with this vocal bowl, it's just shaka, 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 shaka. Hi, hat, hi, hat. And if you've got one of those recycled giant bottles, you can play with the hi hat. Hi, hat, hi, hat, hi, hat, hi, hat, hi, hat, hi, hat. And the bass drum, the bass drum.